The one you you do the bird. Yeah, I do. That's the best. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sallallahu alayhi wa nabi umi. وهو بأن يبكى على نفسه أن يبكي على نفسه أحق من أن يعتد من أن يعتد بقوله ثم إن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بين أسرار تعيين الأوقات في بعض المواضع كما قال في أربع قبل الظهر إنها ساعة تفتح فيها أبواب السماء فأحب أن يصعد لي فيها عمل صالح وروي عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم في صوم يوم عاشوراء أن سبب مشروعيته نجاة موسى وقومه من فرعون في هذا اليوم و... من فرعون في وأن سبب مشروعيته في نتباع سنة موسى عليه السلام وبين أسباب بعض الأحكام وأن سبب مشروعيته فينا اتباع سنة موسى عليه السلام فقال في المستيقذ فإنه لا يدري أين باتت يده وفي الاستنثار فإن الشيطان يبيت على خيشومه وقال في النوم فإنه إذا اتجع استرخت مفاصله وقال في الرم الجمار إنه لإقامة ذكر الله وقال إنما جعل استئذان من أجل البصر من أجل البصر وفي الهرة إنها ليست بنجس إنما هي من الطوافين عليكم أو الطوافات وبين في مواضع أن الحكمة فيها دفع مفسدة دفع مفسدة دفع مفسدة كالنهي عن الغيلة إنما هو مخافة ضرر الولد إنما هو مخافة ضرر الولد أو مخالفة فرقة من الكفار قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإنها تطلع بين قرن الشيطان قرن الشيطان وحين إذن يسد لها الكفار يسد لها الكفار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على النبي الكريم محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين keeping in view the brief summary of what Imam said before this they're talking about the hikmah and wisdom of the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned before that one is the ibadah so ibadah even though the basic hikmah and purpose is in ibadah is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why we pray because Allah said Aqimu Salah why we fast because Allah said Kutib Alaikum Siyam why we pay Zakah because Allah said Wahatu Zakah that is the utmost highest hikmah and wisdom in Ibadah but still there are secondary hikmahs and wisdom in Ibadah as well we pray prayer because of order and obedience but if we will pray the prayer accordingly, the way shown by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So what are the wisdom therein? Number one, we will be neat and clean physically. Got it. Our body is clean. Our dress is clean. The place where we pray, that is clean. Number two, the Nizamul Awqaat. We will be very disciplined as far as our time is concerned. Got it? And number three, if we will pray with the Imam, so we will learn how to live as a group in Jama'ah. That means a central command and follow the command and the order. Got it? So these are the wisdoms. Now, same is the case in fasting. Why we do fast? Because Allah has ordered us to fast. So we do that. But the secondary wisdoms are there. 
Number one, to know that if we did not have food, so how difficult it would have been for us. Got it? So it will create in our nature to pay thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has provided us. Number one. Number two, we will know the difficulty of those who are victims of starvation or they have short of food. They have short of food. So it will give us a spirit to feed those who are hungry. Got it? Yes. Why we pay zakat? Because Allah says, Wa atu zakat. That is the utmost wisdom. But secondary wisdom is dear. Number one, to treat our natural miserliness in human nature there is miserliness that they are miserly but when you will start giving so you are treating their disease of yours got it so you are purifying or even sanctifying your nature that's another wisdom and number two that you are helping the poor you are giving them the zakat Why we are going for high? That is ibadah. The utmost wisdom is وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا We do perform hajj because that is the honor of Allah. And that's the end of the story. But secondary wisdom is there. Number one, to leave your homeland for the sake of Allah. To travel for the sake of Allah. To leave your kids and your wife for the sake of Allah going for some time out of your own house, your own job, your business. This is the wisdom. Got it? Number two, to mingle with people of every color, caste and tribe and region. And being in one and the same clothing of a haram, that in the end, that much is my share from what I have earned. Yes, two shrouded coffin, and that is the end of the story. And number four, that is equality. That doesn't matter how big shot you are or how poor. But there, all of them, they are having the same two simple cotton clocks. Yes, so equality of human being. What? The quality of human beings, so these are the wisdoms. But beside Ibadah, other rules, they have the wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has allowed certain activities and He has forbidden certain other activities because of the wisdom there. Got it? He allowed us to sell and to purchase. To sell and because what the wisdom is? Need, necessity. You have something, I have another thing. You are in need of that stuff of mine, I'm in need of your stuff. So exchange, in one way or the other. Exchange, as a water sale, yes, good for good. Or I will sell you mine for currency and you will sell yours for currency. Got it? And certain activities that is forbidden, like interest and usury. Why? That is exploitation. Why that's forbidden? Exploitation. That is exploitation. exploitation of others are their necessity. So Sharia forbade that. Got it? So in every single rule, they are a wisdom. But the Imam Rahmatullah says that even though spread it or dispersed in the books of Sharia, we find that sometimes ulama spread it or dispersed it. They are talking about the wisdom of certain rules but not as a proper subject, not as a proper subject. So he said that when they spoke about that, it means that this is not a bid'ah. And he said, rather this is sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and of Sahaba, Rizwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, to find out the philosophy of the rule. So in this regard, Imam Rahmatullah says, now those who are avoiding this fun or this subject, so Imam Rahmatullah says that their knowledge is not considerable. Their knowledge, 
are not dependable. Their knowledge is not dependable and not considerable. And Imam Ramatullah says, such like person, he should cry on his own self and feel sorrow, sorry for himself. That's why I do not know it. To weep and cry on himself, that is much more better uh, that his saying would be considered by others. Instead of his saying to be considered by others, he should cry for himself. That, oh, I missed it harsh. And then Imam Ramatullah says that why this fun is a type of sunnah? A type of sunnah. Summa inna nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayyana asrara ta'in al Now look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, aqimir salah li duluk is shams ila ghasakil layl wa quran al fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in such a way or such a context, but then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained it. That there are khamsu salawatin faradahunna allahu fil yawmi wal layla. Five prayers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it mandatory in day and night. And the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the times. So now that is fariza to pray the prayer in time. That is fariza. To pray the prayer in time. But beside that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for these times, he mentioned some wisdom also. Some hikmah also. We know hikmah or we do not know. We pray Salat Fajr in Fajr time, in Salat Zohr, in Zohr time. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Summa Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bayyana asrara ta'in al awqad. Then he explained in detail asrar, the secrets. Ta'in al awqad of, 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 of fixing up these times fi baz al mawazi in certain places. Kama qala, like as he said, fi arba'in qabla al zuhri, in four sunnah before zuhr prayer. Before four fard, what we do? Four sunnah. Four sunnah. Fi arba'in qabla al zuhr, innaha sa'atun. That that is a time before first prayer. That is a time the doors or the gates of Asman are getting open at that time. فأحب أن يسعد لي فيها عمل صالح. So I like to have a righteous, good deed of mine to climb there and through that gate. So this is the wisdom. Yeah, this is the wisdom of four sunnah before first. What are we on the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It is narrated from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi sawmi yawmi ashura in the fasting of the 10th of Muharram in the fasting of the 10th of Muharram anna sabab mashru'iyatihi nijat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam that why it has become mashru' or it has become sharia nijat Musa that Musa alayhi salatu wa salam got rescued on that very day wa Nijatu Musa wa qawmi and his people as well min fir'awna fi haza liyom from Pharaoh and his system in this day wa inna sabab mashur so now Musa alayhi salam and his people they were doing the fasting of Ashura because of paying thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why we do it because that is the sunnah of our beloved prophet Musa alayhi salatu wa salam wa inna sabab mashur riyatihi fina and that is the sharia for us that we follow the footsteps of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though he was fasting in Makkah as well, the Ashura, but when he came to Medina, he saw the Jew people that they are fasting this 10th of Muharram. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them, that what the background of this fasting in your being? So they said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued us and along with our Prophet on this very day from Pharaoh and from his system, from his uh, mean, uh, Socratic system. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Nahnu ahakku bi Musa minkum. We have much more deserving people to follow Musa alayhi salatu wa salam than you people. Got it? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered Sahaba that now we have to fast the tenth of Ashura, but now to have a distinction from you, we should join with it either the ninth of Muharram or the eleventh of Muharram to make it, make it a pair. So anyhow, Wabayyana, Asbaba Ba'd al-Ahkam, and also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained 
The reasons are because there are certain rules. فَقَالَ فِي الْمُسْتَيْقِدِ Now look, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said in a hadith, is a stake as ahadukum min manami. When somebody woke up from his sleeping, wala yarmisanna yadahu fil ina. So he should not put his hand in the water part. In what? In the water part. Fa inna hula yadri hatta yaksilaha salasan till he wash it three times. Fa inna. Now this is the wisdom. That why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbade us to put our hands after waking up inside the water. Because he doesn't know that where his hand was at night time. Maybe he had done pee or poo and that place was dirty, even dry, but that was dirty. And maybe he was putting his hand in sleeping there, so the filth is there. Yes, and in hot weather, especially in Arabia, people are getting sweat. So now with sweating, that filth is becoming uh, uh, once again, yes. So maybe his, heart, his hand is dirty with that. So if he will put his hand in the water, so what will happen? The water will become necklace. So this is the wisdom. Now, this is the rule. Don't put your hand in the water. Okay. Rasulullah said it. We are not doing that. But Rasulullah he mentioned the wisdom. That the wisdom is, he doesn't know where his hand was staying at night. And look at me. When we are making wudu, so we are rinsing our mouth and we are washing our nose. We are washing our nose. Got it? So, that's in the honor of Rasulullah and Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that wash your nose when you are making wudu. We are doing that. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi himself, he mentioned the wisdom therein. فَإِنَّ shaitan يَبِيتُ عَلَىٰ خِشُومِهِ Because Satan at night is sitting there right in the central, on the central wall of the nose, or the nostril. What the central wall is called? Septum. Septum, yes. So he is sitting on the septum. So you have to, and look, our elders, even though the woman, yes, our mothers and grandmothers and so on and so on, they were not the ulama of the they were not the ulama of deen. But when we were small kids and we were waking up, so they used to tell us, wash your mouth and wash your nose because at night Satan is doing pee in our mouth and in our nose. You know what I'm saying? So where from they got it? Rasulullah said, Fa in the shaitana ye beetu ala khishumihi. And that's why Rasulullah said, Imam Nisiri narrated. Imam Ibn Sirin Ramatullah narrated that Rasulullah said that Al Manamat Al Muhawifa. Yes, the scary dreams. What? The scary dreams. The scary dreams. Rasulullah said that Satan is sitting there on that viewpoint and he's showing you different type of scenes. So sometimes you are running and two, three dogs are behind you. <laughs> One is that of Masood dog. Yes. Masood, you have it or? No, not anymore. Okay, where is that? My cousin has it. Okay, that's good. Give it. I have a cat now. <laughs> Why are you are running between dog and cat? <laughs> okay. So now Masood has a cat. So, okay. So anyhow, the cat, cat is also coming, inshallah. Now our Hadith is coming. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَإِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَبِيتُ عَلَىٰ خَيْشُونِ وَقَالَ فِي النَّوْمِ Now look. If somebody will pass the air, his wuzu is broken. Yes or not? Say, yes. yes. His wuzu is broken. But Rasulullah said, if somebody slept and then he woke up. He slept, he was with wuzu, but he slept. So his wuzu is broken. Yes. The order of the Prophet when you will wake up, so you must make wuzu because the Prophet said it. But the Prophet, he mentioned the wisdom as well. He said, فَإِنَّهُ is a That when he was, istija mean yes, lying on your back, very relaxed. Because when he get, get relaxed, istarqat mafasiluhu. Istarqat mafasiluhu. So, his mafasil, mafasil the plural of mifsal. Mifsal means the giants. His giants are becoming loose. The giants are becoming, becoming loose. And the air is controlled by the giants. <laughs> when the giants became loose, so it means, yeah, control is strong now. When the controller is turned up, so what will happen? Yes. Isn't it will go out? So Rasulullah said, and in sleeping, 
you cannot check yourself that it went out or not. So that's why the very sleeping is the basic cause of breaking your wudu. Got it? So this is the wisdom Prophet said it. And we are going there to Mina. And in Mina, we do the remedy of Jamarat. Yes, pelting stones or pebbles on Jamarat. So Rasulullah, why we do it? Ibrahim did it. Why we do it? Rasulullah did it. Why we do it? Prophet ordered us to do that. Yeah, that's the end of the story. The Sharia, Sharia mean obedience. Yeah, but Prophet himself, he mentioned the wisdom. And he said, in Ramiya Jamarat, in the way Qamat is Allah, that that is for the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah Allah Akbar, Bismillah Allah Akbar, Bismillah Allah Akbar, this is the wisdom. Waqala, in the Majuhayal is Tizan, min Adil Basar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tatkhulu buyutan ghaira buyutikum, say, Hatta tastani su wa tusallimu ala aliyah. Enter not the houses of others, hatta tastani su, until you ask permission. Until you ask permission. So why per Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't enter without permission. Yes, order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, got it? From the creator of the whole world, this order came. This order came, executive order. This what? Executive order. So there is no reason to reject it. You have to obey that. <coughs> but Rasulullah himself, he mentioned the wisdom. That what's the philosophy? What's the wisdom? What's the reason? Inna istizan min ajdil basar. That this istizan and asking permission is because of, yes, not to look at someone without, uh, someone's secrets without his permission. If someone's secret, without, so it means that entrance without permission is the, Forbidden because of eyes. So now, wherever, yeah, wherever you cannot look at something without, uh, 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 isn't and without permission, so you should not look at it. Because the reason is that. Okay, so it means the entrance to the house is not allowed because of this eyes. Because of this eyes. So it means that, uh, look, you are not entering, but you are standing here in a window. And you are looking inside. That is also haram because that entrance was haram because of this. Now you are doing the same thing from outside. Got it? In the Majhulan is Tizan, Min Ajil Basar, Wafil Hirra, in the gate of Masood, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it. And what? When Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Is our Abal Kalbu fi inaya hadiku? Is that? When dog licks in the part of anyone, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, wash it seven times, in one riwayah eight times. And one time you may rub it with the, the dirt. With what? The dirt. With the dirt. Got it? The, so now, that is the mother of Imam Shafi and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and even Imam Malik. Even though, according to Imam Malik, the Saliwa of dog is not just, that is not filthy. That's not filthy. filthy. But he said the order is there, so this Amrita Abudi. Rasulullah said it. So even though he said that his um, saliva, that is not just, but if it licked in a part, you must wash it seven times or eight times. Sure. And according to Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Imam Shafi, that saliva of dog is najas. <clears throat> So you must wash it seven times or eight times, and one time you have to put the mud there in. Rub it with the mud. Imam Abu Hanifa Ramatullahi Ali says that now this order of seven or eight times, this is not shari. This is not shari. He says that this is tabi and tibi. Yes, what? Tabi and tibi. Tabi and tibi. This is from medical point of view. Yes. So Shafi and Ahmad can say that, uh, who told you? He said, the dirt told me. Yes, who told you? The dirt. He said, what? The dirt. He said, dirt itself is filth. Dirt itself is filth. Itself, itself. itself. Prophet says, clean it with dirt. Why? Because there are particles in dirt which kill the rabies. Which kill the rabies. So that's why Rasulullah said that, uh, rub it with mud and wash it as far as the case of Sharia is concerned. So the part will become usable if you will clean it three times. Yes, wash it one time, dry it. Wash it second time, 
dry it, wash a third time, dry it, and now that is usable, you can use that. Got it? So he said that this is Sharqi Hukum, that is Tibbi Hukum. So if you are asking for a Sharqi Fatwa, so you will say three times. If you say, how it will be? Yes? Yes? Yes. Or not? And we will say there are two Imam Shafi and Imam Hanbal Muhammad with you, respect to both of you. If you will come to Europe and to America. So you will see here that they are licking the saliva. So anyhow. <laughs> yes, Ahmed or not? Okay. So when Rasulullah said it, so now as you know, that people keep dogs at house, but they keep cats. Yes. Okay, also, so Sahaba Rizwanullah Ali Majma'in asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Rasulullah, wa fil hirra, what about the cat? We should do the same thing. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Inna alayhi sallam bin ajasin. Number one, the cat is not a filthy. It's not a filthy animal. Inna ma hiya min at-tawbafina alaykum abit tawbafat. It's male, they are roaming around you, and it's female are roaming around you. Here is the couch, here is on the bed. Sometimes that is, and we were there with Brother Ahmad. His kid was sleeping in a double bed like this. Got it? So it means that it is very difficult to protect your parts from cat if you keep one. So Rasulullah said, that is not just in the hand, in the mahiya, in the tawwafin alaykum wa tawwafat. Wa bayyina fi mawadra. And in certain places, the Prophet explained in detail, under hikmat fiya, that the wisdom there in the rule is dafu mafsadatin. Dafu mafsadatin. Yes, that is to, to defend something otherwise. Dafu mafsadatin. Something which is harmful. Dafu mafsadatin. Kannahi anil ghila. And what is ghila? Ghila is meeting with your wife when she is pregnant. Meeting with your wife when she is pregnant. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said that, that you should avoid that. And what is the reason? That for mafsada. Inna ma huwa makhafatu zarar al-warat. Inna ma huwa makhafatu zarar al-warat. Maybe the baby in the womb is getting harmed with. The baby in the womb, yet it doesn't mean that in Sharia that is haram. But the reason is that maybe the baby is getting harmed. Or is a group of disbelievers, they used to do that. So the second hikmah is to distinguish yourself from such like disbelievers. Now look, Rasulullah says that at sunrise time you should not pray prayer. At sunrise time, you should not pray. That is what the makruh. The makruh tahrimi mean haram. If you will do that, so that is a sin. You should not pray at that time, neither qaza nor nafl or whatever. You have to wait until the sun will become bright. So now, Rasul, Prophet don't do that. Because we are not doing that. But Prophet himself, he mentioned the wisdom theory. Fa inna tatlu bena karne shaitan. That at that time, the sun is rising in between the two horns of Saturn. The two horns of Saturn. What it means? Wahin as in just the lack of It doesn't mean that Satan is standing there and the, the sun is coming out. Yeah, that is only to give you the scene. That's why the kuffar and the disbeliever are Abar of Shams. They are worshipping the sun at that time. They are worshipping the sun and their worship is following Shaitan. Their worshipping is what? Following Shaitan. So Prophet said, How said the Tahrif? How said the Tahrif? Why the Sharia has forbidden certain things, Sadibab al Tahrif, not to distort, not to distort or forward the rule of Sharia, like Liman Arada, Liman Arada, and Yusal al Nafi, or Yasil al Nafi, or Yasil al Nafi, but Nafi that will Fariza. For example, look at me. Nafi. Can you pray eight rakat with one niya or not? Yes. Yes or not? Say. Yes. yes. Can you pray six rakat with one uh, niya or not? Yes. But as far as the first prayer is concerned, we do pray two, like five. We do pray three, 
like Maghrib. Are we to pray for like Yes. Now look, if you want to pray four rakat sunnah of zuhur before Fars, and you are making a six rakat, that four will be sunnah and the two with the same niyyah will be nafal. That is allowed, not a recommended one, but that is allowed. Uh, but can you do the same practice with your Fars also? Say, to pray six rakat, four will be Fars and two will be, no, that will be a distortion to Sharia. That will be a perversion of Sharia. So that's why Rasulullah forbade us. Bihaza, halakam an kana qablakum. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. He stopped someone who was joining two rakat nafal with four farahs. So Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu stopped him. Yes. And when the Sahabi told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I was doing that, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu stopped me. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala, Asaab Allahu bika ibn al-Khattab. Asaab Allahu bika, Ejaalaka sahiba. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken you to the right path. That you start him. Awujud harajin. Or something is forbidden in Sharia. Because that will cause you some sin. Or that will cause you some difficulty or hardship. Awujud harajin. كَقَوْلِ هِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَوَلِكُلِّكُمْ ثَوْبَانْ أَوَلِكُلِّكُمْ ثَوْبَانْ بِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ said that if you do not have mean two pieces of cloth so one piece of cloth which will cover your body from your belly button along with your knees yes so you can pray there beneath your knees the legs are open and over your belly button, your body is open. open. So you can pray. So some Sahaba said, not two pieces of cloth. So Rasulullah said, Awali kulli kum sawban. All of you or every one of you have two dresses or two pieces of cloth. They were poor people. Some of them they had only one piece. So it means that Rasulullah he mentioned the reason there, or he mentioned the wisdom there, that why prayer is allowed in only one piece. So the Quran says, "Allah knows that you are going to be taught by your own self, so He will give you forgiveness." Now look in the beginning. The rule for fasting was that fasting used to start with your sleep at night time. Look at me. You prayed your salat at Isha. As long as you are awake you were allowed to eat and drink. But the moment you went to your bed, so now the eating and drinking, that is forbidden. Meeting your wife, that is forbidden. Because with your sleep, the fasting starts. You got it? But Sayyidina Umar, he met his wife at night in Ramadan. And then in the morning, he came to the Prophet said, it happened for the Messenger of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that now you can drink and eat and meet your wife until Fajr. Until what? Until Fajr. And he mentioned the reason. Allah knows. That you will do khiyanat or cheating to yourself. Allah knows. So Allah he made a U-turn to you. And now look. Omar Radiyatana did what he did. At that time that was the rule. But look, this is actually we can say that this is a status of Umar, a position of Umar, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he implemented that rule and law with retroactive effect. With what? Retroactive. Retroactive. And retroactive means that rule came now, but it is applied since yesterday. Why? Why? Yeah. To rescue yourself. Or to rescue, say, uh -huh. or to rescue this one, or that one, or that one. To rescue Umar from kafara or even from kaza. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, from last night that is implemented. So Allah said, Fataba alaykum, it means rule with wrong. Fataba alaykum means rule with wrong. Say, rule with wrong. Wa afa ankum. What was the violation of Umar? That is pardoned. Wa afa ankum. Fataba alaykum, wa afa ankum. Wa bayyana fi wa adil muazik. Asrar at tarheed wa tarheed. And also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He explained in detail in certain places the secrets of Tarheeb and Tarheeb. Tarheeb means, yes, to frighten someone 
or to warn someone. And targhib means to attract him to do something. Arrahba or rahba. Targhib and targhib is from arrahba or rahba. Waraja'u sahaba fi al muazir al mushtabiha fa kashafa shubhatahum. And sahaba rizwanullahi alayhi majma'in. They did muraja'at or came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi al muazir al mushtabiha in confusing places. In what? In confusing places. Fa kashafa shubhatahum. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made their confusion clear. وردد الأمر إلى أصله and he took back the rule to its origin the rule to its origin قال صلاة الرجل في جماعة تزيد على صلاتي في بيتي وصلاته في سوقي خمسة وعشرين درجة وذلك إن أحدكم إذا توزأ فأحسن الوزوء ثم أتى المسجد لا يريد إلا الصلاة الحديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says that the prayer of someone with جماعة في جماعة with jama'ah, tazidu, ala salatihi, that is increases or enriches, ala salatihi, on his prayer, fi beti alone at home, wa salatu fi suqihi, and his prayer in the bazaar alone, khamsam wa ashrin adarajatan, so that one prayer with jama'ah, that elevate 25 to 25 times, what? 25. 25 times, wa zalika, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned the reason, or mentioned the wisdom, inna hadakum idha tawassara. That when some one of you, he made a wudu, fa'ahsan al-wudu, he made a best wudu or a good wudu, summa atal masjid, then he came to the prayer, la dar to the masjid, la yuridu illa salah, and he came to the masjid only for prayer. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that this is the wisdom, he made wudu at home, he made it best, then he started. He was walking to the masjid, driving to the masjid. Then he came to the masjid. He was waiting for the prayer time and for jama'ah time. So all these things, they elevated this one prayer to 25 times more. So this is the wisdom of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now look, if nikah is not done, so meeting with such a girl, that's allowed, or that's zina? That is zina. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when somebody will do nikah, wa fi buz'i ahadikum sadaqa, in the private parts of body, of someone will the charity. So what does the charity mean? For charity, you are rewarded. For charity, you are. So it means, when you are using that private part in a halal place, so that just like a charity for you, you would be rewarded. Fi buz'i ahadikum, qal ya Rasulullah, ay aati ahaduna shahwatahu, wa yakuna lahu fiya ajr, we are fulfilling our desire. So someone will be fulfilling his desire and he will be getting reward also. So Rasulullah sallallahu said, Ara'ayt, tell me, law waza'aha fi harami, if he will put that private part in a haram place, in a forbidden place, lakana alayhi fi bidr, for sure he will be having a sin there and a burden there, fa kazari keza waza'aha fi halal, so now when he put it in a halal place, kana lahu ajrun. So this is the wisdom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqi muhammadin wa alayhi wa sahbihi ma'in. Bi rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi. So for sure now you will find Shaykh Muhammad if he is listening to this, so he will rush.